What is up, everybody? Josh Tapp here again, and welcome back to the Lucky Titan podcast. And today we're here with Scott Anderson, who you will all remember. He rocked the mic with us probably well over a year ago now, Scott, I believe. It's been a while. Been about a year, yeah. I think it the has hair been. color changed in the time we, since last time we talked. <laughs> That's all COVID. That's all COVID. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but that's it's, right. it's good to have you back in, man. I'm excited to, to really dive into this today. And for those of you, obviously, who know the way that I that I interview is I like to talk to the person, obviously, before we hop on the interview. And Scott and I are having such a great conversation. I'm like, let's just continue this on the interview so people let's do it. People don't miss out on this. But I want to talk through your model a little bit, Scott, because when we were talking a couple of years ago, you were literally just launching this, and now it's this big, thriving company. You know, you've obviously proven your, your metal as an entrepreneur, and I'm excited to see what has happened in the last couple of years with you. Sure. You know, I, this, we're not here to talk COVID or anything, right? But it's like, what, what's happened in the last couple of years that's helped you to thrive so well? So, so give us kind of a little bit of an idea of what your model looks like first off. You bet. So, um, so I coach and have coached entrepreneurs for a long time, and I'm a serial entrepreneur myself. And um, on a kind of a one-on-one -on -one basis, typically with the CEO and then with the CEO or founders leadership team. And uh, as you know, as an entrepreneur and I do, we entrepreneurs are a little unique and uh, uh, we uh, sometimes can do ourselves more harm than good. But uh, unique anyway. meaning crazy. I mean, right? Crazy, yeah. <laughs> that was the word Let's I was it. groping for was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> Not just not just the bright shiny object syndrome, but the crazy obsession with bright shiny objects. Um, anyway, so that's been you know that's been my my whole life really, uh, and come from generations of entrepreneurs. So we're fun at parties, but just a little bit crazy. Um, <laughs> and so I've been doing you know kind of one on one on some group and some courses, but in the last uh, year I. Um, created a, uh, a burnout um, recovery and prevention program that I really had to create for myself. I was really, really burned out when I sold my, I had an advertising agency that I sold a few years ago. And when I got out of that, I was really, really crispy. And um, so I had to come up with some ways to recover from my own burnout, to be honest, and um, find kind of a, a way to uh, regain energy, regain motivation, regain enthusiasm, and so forth. And but also wanted to do it in a little bit different way. Um, whereas most of my coaching previously had been one on one, I wanted to do something that would scale and allow me to serve a lot more people. So uh, this our new program called Burnout Breakthrough is a um, is a course. Well, that's sort of a hybrid. There's there's an online course combined with a with weekly group coaching and um, one-on-one -on -one coaching with me uh, and a uh, an online mastermind portal. And we tested a lot of different components, but it seemed like that's really the combination that generated the best results. Yeah, love that. Well, and I, I love to see this happen because we were talking about this. There's like these hybrid models that are coming out where it's done for you with done with you or exactly. DIY or whatever. You know, I, I, I'm the kind of guy where this is going to sound really vain, but I feel like I've graduated from the core side of things, uh -huh. you, wanting the done for you. But then I sure. realize I have these wake up calls all the time. I'm like, I still really need that training <laughs> a lot of times, sure. and, but not wanting to take that time. And I, I'm curious, particularly with the topic of what you're dealing with, you know, of, yeah. of burnout being, like you said, it, that is the true pandemic that's hitting us right now is a lot of entrepreneurs are hitting this point where it's like, Oh, I don't want to go into work. I don't want to do this struggling. Do you want to take sales calls? You know, I'm, I'm burnt exactly. out, but how do you help somebody want to make an investment in something and dedicate time to it when they're already burnt out? That's my biggest question for you. Well, that's a really good question. And, you know, I think part of it is we designed the program. We, we did uh, a number of pilots to make sure we had sort of the best combination for entrepreneurs who, you know, at least I feel like I, yeah, I pretty much know that already. So there's, <laughs> you know, there's that problem. Um, and there's the problem with time. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're an entrepreneur, you're typically, you're jam packed. Um, even if you've got a five hour work week, you still got your, you know, your, your week is pretty well booked. So the question was, you know, how do you provide information that's really relevant and usable, but, um, but, not something that they already know. And to, to provide everything in the context of really, really busy people 
who just want things that are going to work right now. So in the pilot uh, groups that we did, um, both I started doing individual, I sort of put together this program based on my own experience and what helped me get out of burnout. Then I tested it on individuals, then I tested it in face-to-face -face group settings, um, and then ultimately in remote group settings via Zoom. And um, you know, was just able to find the pieces that were acceptable to entrepreneurs uh, in terms of their effectiveness. But it's sort of entrepreneurs want to kind of uh, you know take a pill and have something happen. And right. uh, so that's the way this is really set up to be bite size um, bite size techniques that you learn and you use immediately. And um, and uh, the other thing about burnout though is that so much of burnout has to do with isolation and disconnection. Uh, from people, and it was uh, certainly exacerbated by COVID. But that is the nature of the of the disorder to begin with: is uh, a disconnection and kind of a withdrawal and an isolation. And so we found that a certain element of of group was or mastermind was really really helpful, not only in cheering people on and seeing that it was possible to by watching their peers get better and feel better, um, but also to kind of defeat that that isolation. Yeah. But again, we had to we had to kind of we had to to test each one of the pieces and then the combination of pieces uh, to make sure that it works for entrepreneurs. Because you're exactly right; they're really busy. Yeah. Well, and, and you you kind of threw a word in there too that it sparked my curiosity. Right? We think of burnout as a state, maybe, and that's kind of how I've always thought. Oh, it's just a state. You know, I'm I'm right. in, in burnout mode. I can get out of it, kind of thing. I know for myself, when I get ex like really what I would say, truly burnt out, that's when anxiety kicks in for me, but you exactly. use the word disorder. So yeah. do you think it's an actual, is, is it an actual disorder burnout? It is. The, yeah. The World Health Organization and the American uh, Psychiatric Association, the APA, have um, classified burnout as a, as its own discrete cluster of symptoms that's, that includes anxiety, includes depression. Uh, includes stress, includes physical uh, and uh, and psychological exhaustion, but it's not really any of those things. I mean, it's not depression per se. It's not um, generalized anxiety disorder per se. I'm also I don't know if I mentioned I'm also a licensed therapist, and so it's um, but it does have a classification all its own by the World Health Organization and by the American um, uh, Psychi uh, Psychiatric Association, and it will be. Uh, in the, the next edition of the DSM, which is sort of the catalog of, of uh, mental health disorders. So it, it is its own um, disorder, its own unique set of symptoms, and also its unique uh, set of, um, of treatments, let's say, or of recovery tools. Yeah, and I love to hear that. Sorry, I'm coughing my lungs out over here. <clears throat> um, that's interesting though, that they've actually come out with that and said, Hey, this is an actual disorder because part, and I, I hope people who are listening to this find encouragement with that is when it does get diagnosable, that means yeah. there's a solution to the problem. <laughs> um, exactly. Because when it's not diagnosable, you're sitting here going, well, what is it? Is it anxiety? Is it depression? Is it this, that, or the other? But so you've almost created like a clinical group for it in a business, in, in a way that business people will understand, <laughs> which is a master. That's right. Yeah. As as someone told me the other day, they were a client that was signing into our into our uh, our system, and they said, "What I need is sort of a mashup of a coach and a counselor and kind of a drill sergeant and a teacher." And I said, "That's it. You're here. You're in the right place. This is the right place for you." Um, but yeah, there are you know there is a distinct um, set of um, symptoms, and in fact. There is a, a professor at UCAL Berkeley uh, named Christine Maslach, who has done probably the most exhaustive and definitive research on burnout. And she created something uh, in the 80s and has refined it since called the Maslach Burnout Inventory, which is the definitive um, like 150 question um, assessment of burnout, of, of clinical um, burnout. Yeah. And we, we provide for our clients a sort of an abbreviated version of the Maslach burnout inventory to give them a sense of, you know, do they have the symptoms? Cause they're very, they're very specific, you know, a sort of a physical and mental exhaustion, uh, psychological exhaustion is a big, is a, the part that people notice first, but by the time you notice that you're pretty well into burnout. 
Um, so if you wake up uh, in the morning feeling tired and not just tired, but sort of defeated uh, before your day even starts, um, that's burnout. Right. Um, and, and it has to do with overwhelmed and overloaded cortisol and adrenaline um, systems that are, um, are simply, are literally burned out. That's kind of the man who uh, created the expression burnout was talking about doctors and nurses in the 70s. And he was talking about, in that case, we would, today we would call it empathy uh, or, or compassion um, overload. And, um, but it was also just, just the, the stress uh, the natural stress systems in our body that get us uh, alert and ready to do important things get overwhelmed and um, they can't do what they're meant to do. So exhaustion is part of it. This feeling of disconnection is part of it. Um, a feeling of there's some you know unique kind of symptoms. There's a, uh, a guilt with a lot of people that the, no matter how hard they try, they can't do enough. Uh, there's a certain amount of workaholism um, that shows up for most people in burnout perfectionism. This is the problem with entrepreneurs in particular who are all about achievement. And um, we're sort of, what have you done for me lately kind of people. Right. And uh, after a while, achievement also has burnout. Um, and that no matter how much you achieve, it's you can't put enough fuel in the tank. Yeah. Well, and, and I'm, I'm just curious on this too, because we're going to do a mass diagnosis here, right? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> what, what, are some of the, what are some of the main symptoms to where you know, like, hey, I'm I'm legitimately burning out. You kind of mentioned a couple in there, but what would you yeah. say are kind of the the highlight three or four that people should know that they're in? Sure. Well, the, the one that people notice the soonest or the earliest on, and but by the time they notice this, they're pretty well into burnout usually, um, is a feeling of exhaustion um, that's pretty pervasive. Even after a good night's sleep, um, people wake up and they're still feeling really tired and overwhelmed, and a lot of people will say to me in confidence, you know, I, I don't know how I'm going to get through the day. I mean, I'm going to have to really bluff my way through it, but I don't know how I'm going to do it because I'm really not on my game, um, neither from a standpoint of energy or creativity or just enthusiasm, motivation and drive that entrepreneurs are used to having. So that's part of it. Um, in a lot of cases, there is anxiety and stress and a sense of overwhelm that no matter uh, what they do, they can't do enough. Um, ultimately, it takes the form of, um, in terms of interaction with uh, employees, partners, shareholders, customers even, there, it, it starts as a feeling of kind of disconnection and maybe disconnection from your own goals and from your own, in the culture of a company you created yourself, where you start to feel disinterested or disconnected. And in, and in its worst stages, there's a feeling of actual animosity to, toward coworkers, uh, even towards customers, towards investors. So you can imagine how destructive uh, it can become. Right. Um, and so, uh, so anyway, yeah, the, the symptoms are actually pretty distinctive. And, uh, but we do offer, and if anybody wants to take our sort of abridged mass life burnout inventory, we have a a 25 question um, uh, version of it, which will really pinpoint it in, in case you you think that that might be the case for you. Yeah, well, and, and I'm curious too, because from the day you start business, you experience moments of all of those symptoms, it feels like, right? I mean, just being yeah. in business comes with those stressors. Do you find that it's typically because they're in the wrong industry or doing providing the wrong service? Or is it simply a state that needs resolved? You know, it's, that's a very interesting question because a lot of times I'll talk to people, uh, especially that are executives versus business owners. And, um, you know, and they'll ask, I mean, the, the, a lot of times they'll talk about there being a toxic culture or an unreasonably demanding or predatory kind of a culture. And, and we never want to dismiss that because if you're in a, in a punitive or predatory or, you know, a toxic situation, you should get out of it. Um, but what we found is that, is that once the burnout is, is relieved, um, people often find that their current situation is, is not really the problem, the, the working situation. For entrepreneurs, I mean, obviously we are the boss of us. And so we create right. our own culture and our own problems sometimes. Um, 
but yeah, a lot of people think, well, if I can just get out of this job or sell this company, for example, some people think if they get out of this relationship, if I get divorced, um, you know, there are a lot of people that kind of unfortunately go to those kinds of conclusions. Right. When what we find is that if they can resolve the burnout, uh, generally that's not it. We also find, on the other hand, we do, we've had clients who have sold businesses only to find that the burnout is still with them. And we found high level executives who will quit the job and take another one and find they're still burned out. So unfortunately, there's no band aid. Um, there is a way to get through this much faster uh, in our program in 90 days that are really, you can get past it and past it for good, but it isn't, it's not a good night's sleep isn't gonna do it, a vacation isn't gonna do it. Uh, usually uh, getting a new spouse uh, or, or moving or vacation or any of those things don't generally help. Yeah, because what you would call Band-Aid solutions, right? They're not the long-term. Exactly. See, and I was talking to a guy here on the show I don't know, a, couple, a couple months ago, not in the burnout space by any means, but he was taught, we were talking about this topic and he was like, the problem is like we, we live our lives with black and white thinking. I think he called it du duality. Yes. Said. Yeah. It's like, it's like yeah. the dual brains where, where we think making big decisions will, will alter our situation, you know, because the world's kind of told us that, you know, oh, get, just get divorced. Right. There's a, there's a better person out there for exactly. you or drop the business. There's a better business. And the truth is, is your problems will follow you no matter where you go. It's an inside job. Uh, that's yeah. the problem. And sometimes changing the deck chairs on the Titanic will make a difference. But in our experience, that's usually not the case. And we yeah. usually advise people, uh, and we certainly, you know, if, if you need to move or you need to change, life's too short, be sure to do that. But we really advise our clients to first get through this program and um, learn the skills that you need and, and take these very practical steps and, and see how you feel 90 days later. Um, and what a lot of people find is they may still wanna change or switch a situation, but their motivation is really different. Um, the, the, the whole idea is we feel like it's sort of like painting a house with termites. We figure if we slap a new coat of paint on it, it'll, it'll be good <laughs> and we'll be okay. But if the house has termites, then we gotta, we've really gotta go down to the studs and find out what's wrong. Um, and then you can make, you know, you can make great decisions based on uh, real factors versus made up um, fears or made up insecurities or guilt feelings, overwhelm, et cetera. Yeah. yeah I love to love to hear, you know, those sort of analogies because it helps you realize the, the, the severity of something like this, even if you don't feel like you're in that completely depressive state, you know, that, that Scott mentioned at the beginning, it's, it's one of those things that these are the sort of tools that should be learned to just move exactly. forward as an entrepreneur, because you're going to face this at some point within business. I know for myself, having learned some of these tools from other, from other areas as well, they've helped sure. a ton, but I'm sitting here going, oh man, maybe I need this program, right? Is that the, the truth is, is that it's not, I, I guess the symptoms wouldn't always show up when you're at the breaking point, right? Of I've just got to trash the yeah. company and walk away type situation. It's more of a, why am I just not content today, even though I love what I do, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, that's really what it boils down to is, is, you know, why don't I enjoy this anymore? And, you know, why am I not getting any enjoyment out of this? I mean, if you, people feel disconnected from, from jobs or, or from businesses uh, or not-for-profit organizations that they've spent lifetimes creating. And, and one day just sort of wake up thinking, why am I doing this? And, um, you know, the other point that you mentioned, I mean, once you're, once you're in burnout, um, you know, it's, it's difficult to get out just by doing kind of um, superficial or cosmetic changes. But on the other hand, I really believe it's possible to prevent burnout also by, by knowing um, the, the clinically proven skills that really make a difference. And, um, and I, I think that, so it's not just getting out of burnout, but when I think about this for entrepreneurs and bringing these skills into the companies, the main thing is to prevent burnout. I mean, the, the number one KPI right now in America is talent and workforce. And um, we talk about the great resignation that happened in November when 3 million or 4 million employees walked off the jobs. And a lot of them didn't walk off to other jobs. They just walked off, some to retire. But a lot of people, I work with a lot of advertising agencies, and they had employees who just walked away. They didn't have another job. They just couldn't stand it anymore. Right. And um, so since people is the 
as we talked about in our in our pre conversation. I mean, people are the key to it. Talent is the key to everything in business. Um, what burnout burnout costs us and people leaving us, but also while they stay, it costs productivity, creativity, innovation, et cetera. So to introduce ways for people to not only recover from burnout, but prevent it from happening in the first place, I think is where the action is and where as entrepreneurs, we really have to be thinking. Yeah, love that. Well, and, and I, I hope everybody who feels like, hey, this is something I should go do, jump over to burnoutbreakthrough.com. This, this really is something that I would recommend to everybody. I'd like to go over and take that quiz myself because we really need to figure out, hey, like, where, where are you at on the spectrum, right? Um, yeah. But then Scott, I'll give you a link. Um, I'll, yeah. I'll give you a link and, and you can include it in the show notes. And yeah, uh, um, yeah I think, and you'll get immediate results. And I think it could be useful for people just to know at least what the symptoms are and where they sort of fit in in the continuum of the severity of the symptoms. Yeah, love that. Well, and then Scott, do you mind just leaving us with one final parting piece of guidance? Sure. Um, well, you know, we talked we talked about it earlier about you know whatever it is we're selling, it has to really work, and um, and we have to become you know real advocates uh, for our clients. We have to we have to want the change, whatever that is, whether it's change in their marketing, change in their sales, sales, um, change in their I don't know. Um, uh, in, in any measurable aspect of their life or their business, we have to want that for them, I think, more than they do themselves uh, in a way. Uh, we really, it really pays, I think, to be, to, to think of ourselves as advocates for our clients in that way. Um, and uh, it's really, that's really helped me uh, not only to get through burnout, but to, to kind of approach business in general, especially during COVID. It's really helped me to have, have a reason to get up in the morning and, and to, um, you know, to really pull for my clients.